In a remarkable journey that spans over four decades, the Voyager 2 spacecraft has recently provided groundbreaking insights into the outer reaches of our solar system. As it ventures towards interstellar space, Voyager 2 has unveiled a mysterious and dynamic region known as the Wall of Fire. This extraordinary discovery challenges our understanding of the solar system's boundary and promises to deepen our knowledge of the universe. Join us on this cosmic voyage as we delve into the remarkable findings and the profound implications of this celestial exploration. And of course, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share the channel. When it comes to the Voyager probes, I do find myself uncertain about which one we're discussing here, Voyager 1 or Voyager 2. They share such a similar appearance that it can be quite a challenge to tell them apart. Let's dive into my perspective on this topic. To kick off this video, I was determined to find something around my house, or perhaps an item my parents might have owned, which has truly stood the test of time. After rummaging through my family's belongings, I stumbled upon the perfect candidate a Geiger counter. This trusty device is used to detect various types of radiation. It had its moment of fame in a previous video where it was used to calculate radiation exposure during air travel. Despite its age, this Geiger counter is still in working condition, a testament to its durability. I believe it was purchased back in the late 90s, around 1998 or 99, and it has faithfully served its purpose for over two decades. It's powered by a couple of AA batteries, and I want to make it clear that this video is not sponsored in any way. Now, prepare to be amazed by the incredible endurance of this piece of hardware, which has operated for an astonishing 42 years in the harsh conditions of outer space. These conditions include exposure to radiation, extreme cold, and constant bombardment by various small particles. Both Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 have been in space for 42 years and continue to function. What's even more astonishing is that many of the scientists currently studying the data from these probes were not even born when they were launched in 1977. However, the focus of this video isn't solely on their age. It's about the fact that both Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 have now officially entered what NASA terms interstellar space, a recent confirmation. Voyager 2, which was trailing slightly behind Voyager 1 due to the latter's higher velocity, has now definitively entered what we will label as interstellar space. This designation is based on the continued operation of its instruments. This achievement strongly indicates the presence of a genuine boundary between our solar system and the expanse of interstellar space. In this video, I will delve into these discoveries and provide insights into what lies in the realm of interstellar space. Before we delve into the content proper, you might be wondering about this elongated structure and its purpose. It serves as a support beam, designed to keep the low field magnetometers, which are magnetic field detectors, isolated from any potential magnetic interference originating from the spacecraft itself. There's one magnetometer near the base and another at the tip of this structure. As for the protruding component, that's the RTG, or the nuclear reactor responsible for powering the probe. It's worth noting that there are concerns that this nuclear power source may eventually cease to function. Sometime around 2025, though the exact date remains uncertain, the nuclear reactor powering the probe is expected to have roughly six to eight years of operational life remaining. Moving on, you'll notice a shining object right in the center. That, my friends, is the renowned Golden Disk, also referred to as the Golden Record. This disk contains a compilation of information offering insights into our species and the location of our solar system. The data representing our solar system is determined using well-known pulsars, a reference point for potential interstellar seekers. However, it's worth noting that there's no feasible way for us to retrieve this disk. It also includes recordings of Earth's sounds, making it one of the most precious records we've ever created. If we were to attempt to recover it, it would likely come at a substantial cost. Moving forward, let's explore the array of sensors on the spacecraft, many of which continue to operate and provide invaluable data on interstellar space. So, what exactly have we confirmed this time? Firstly, we validated the existence of what's referred to as the heliopause. This boundary marks the end of our solar system and the commencement of interstellar space. It's primarily defined by the Sun's magnetic field and its interaction with the interstellar magnetic field. 
generated by high-energy events like supernovae. An intriguing discovery is the alignment of both the solar magnetic field and the interstellar magnetic field. Surprisingly, their magnetic north and south poles appear to be in sync. In a graph provided in one of the referenced papers, which you'll find in the description below, it's evident that the strength of the magnetic field increased as the spacecraft transitioned from the solar system to the so-called interstellar space. This increase began around a certain point and experienced a significant jump upon entering the very local interstellar medium, that's VLISM. While the magnetic field strength is far less intense than what we experience on Earth, it's noteworthy in the context of outer space. The stark differences observed in the measurements of the magnetic field and other parameters between Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 imply that the heliosphere is not a uniform structure, but rather fragmented into varying regions with different strengths. One explanation for this variation is its connection to solar cycles, which last approximately 11 years. These cycles correspond to the Sun's activity levels, including changes in its magnetic field. Imagine it as the Sun breathing expanding during active phases and contracting during less active ones. This cyclical nature could influence the shape and size of the heliosphere, accounting for the differences detected when both Voyager probes crossed its boundaries. Additionally, a notable discovery relates to the increase in cosmic radiation upon crossing the heliosphere's boundary. This finding underscores the importance of the heliosphere in shielding our solar system from a significant portion of galactic cosmic rays, which would otherwise impact our planet and the solar system as a whole. Regarding the plasma density, as both probes ventured into interstellar space, they encountered a sudden transition marked by a substantial increase in plasma density and temperature. The temperature notably reached between 30,000 to 50,000 degrees Kelvin, a surprising finding for the scientists. While the density and temperature changes were expected to some degree, the extent of the increase in density and the incredibly high temperatures were unexpected surprises. Collectively, these findings from Voyager 2 strongly suggest the presence of a tangible, physical barrier, a wall of hot plasma and various types of radiation that manifests as we cross into interstellar space. This region also holds significance as a potential location for discovering objects like Eris, Sedna, and even Planet Nine, although it's still far from the Oort cloud where comets originate. Unfortunately, this marks one of the final updates we'll receive from the Voyager probes, as they struggle to maintain communication with Earth due to immense distances. They have served as pioneers in the exploration of our solar system, but soon their mission will conclude and they will become silent remnants of early solar system exploration. The hope that someone may one day discover the golden disk and its contents remains. But that possibility lies in the distant future, as it will take millions of years for the probes to approach nearby stars. In 2038, the New Horizons probe, famous for its Pluto exploration, will also enter interstellar space and provide new insights. However, for Voyager 1 and Voyager 2, it's probable that we may not receive further updates unless communication is eventually re-established. Their impressive longevity in the harshest of conditions speaks to the remarkable achievements of human engineering and ingenuity, a testament to our ability to create enduring instruments for scientific discovery. I'd like to take a moment to explain our recent discoveries and the fact that both Voyager probes have now entered interstellar space. I hope you found this video informative and enjoyable. On a different note, I'd like to mention that I've created a special design as the first ever Wonderful Person merchandise, because all of you are indeed wonderful people, and it's essential to remind yourself of that from time to time. You can subscribe if you haven't already, and share this video with anyone who loves learning about space and science. In the exploration of the solar system's outer fringes, Voyager 2 has unveiled the enigmatic Wall of Fire. This dynamic region challenges our understanding of the solar system's boundary. The insights brought by this mission serve as a testament to human ingenuity and the never-ending quest for knowledge. As we reflect on these discoveries, we are reminded of the countless cosmic mysteries awaiting us. Stay tuned for the next exciting chapter in our cosmic journey, and keep reaching for the stars! Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Space out, and as always, goodbye!